Sometimes all you have is Gerber files and you need to extract centroid information for pick and place equipment. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the quick part functionality in CAM350 and DFM Stream to uh, quickly identify parts and then once those parts are identified how we can then generate a centroid report from them. The first step is that after you've imported your layers and drill, you're going to want to label your layers as to type. So top, bottom, silk, solder mask, and so forth. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and label these. I've skipped ahead a little bit, but now I have all my layers labeled. Now, if your only purpose is to extract centroid information, really all you need is your top layers and uh, maybe your silk screen. But uh, for just the, uh, the quick part here, it's good practice to label all my layers as to type. So once I've done that, I can extract a netlist from uh, my design here. And I can accept all the default settings. And then again, when I'm done with that, I'm ready to start identifying parts. So I'm going to turn on my top side and my silk screen top. And I'm going to zoom in to one of my parts here. The tool we're going to use is Utility Quick Part. It asks us for pin 1. It'll recognize inline pins, so you can just drag across. Now, if I was to go up here, though, this via is inline, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to turn that off. Then I'm going to turn it back on and finish off the component. A right click now, and it asks me for the reference designator. And which side is it on? Okay, I hit OK, and we built one, and it looks like U6 is the same component directly below it, so we're just going to go ahead and left click on it. You'll notice that I have controls over here for turning, as the T mirroring, uh, what angle, um, what reference designator we're using, and so forth. Now, if I want to get out of building this particular one, I just right click and I'm ready to build another one. So I'll come over here to this one. Again, I'll turn off the recognize inline and then turn it right back on again to finish this one off. Um, this one, uh, once I do this, it is U2 in the top side, and then we'll come down to this one. Now this one's actually U1, so I got a couple choices here. I can just go up here and change this to U1, but just to show you that you can edit these after they're done, I'm going to go ahead and place it as U3, get out of the command, and then I'm going to just go to Edit, Change, Ref Des, click on this, and change it to U1. Let's go to the bottom side of the board and do a couple just so you get the feeling there. And I'm going to turn on my silk bottom here. And uh, once again, it's utilities quick part. Identify your pins. Uh, right click to end that. Give it a name. Yeah, let's make it a cap there. And it's now identified as bottom side. Then I can go over to C2 and so forth until I have them all identified. Once I've done this for all the components on my design, I can go to Info, Report, Centroid, and generate a report and save that off or print it out um, that has the, um, the reference designator, the side, and the centroid information for it. And if it was at any angle, it would let you know that as well. So this is how you can take Gerber files and by first of all extracting a netlist and second of all building these components through quick part we can get a centroid report out of this without having to go through a full reverse engineering process.